Hello, welcome to Speech Talk Live. My name is Jay Oza, and I'm the host of this show. And today uh, I have uh, Julie Finkelstein, who's a mentor for the Coursera course Introduction to Public Speaking and a regular on the show. So uh, welcome to Speech Talk Live. This is episode number 30. And uh, this is the first uh, show of the year. So one of the things that uh, we're going to do on, on this show is to kind of come up with our goals for the year, public speaking goals. And I thought it would be a good idea to do that, whether you're watching this, uh, do, do it on your own and uh, share it with somebody. So we're going to kind of pub publicly give our goals, which is kind of important to do that. Uh, but before we go into what we're going to cover on this show, uh, let me just kind of give you a brief uh, highlight uh, of what we try to accomplish on this show. And uh, this is our second year now, so I'm pretty excited. We learned a lot of things uh, from doing it uh, for pretty much most of last year. We did close to 29 episodes. So I think we learned a lot. Uh, again, like I said, if we can get other people to join, fine. But I understand people have a busy schedule. And this does require you know, preparation. And sometimes people just don't have the time. So we kind of understand it. So we're going to try to also figure out what is another way of getting other people involved, not in this particular program, because this is a pretty intense uh, a program. Uh, and, and I think we have uh, Bill Marius. Bill, can you mute your line while we're, uh, I'll just go through the introduction and then you can introduce yourself. So if you can just mute your line, I'll get back to you, okay? Oh, okay, I, because otherwise it's gonna keep shifting back and forth if you make a noise. Right, so the purpose of uh, Speech Talk Live is several things. Uh, one of them is to learn. And I have the belief that public speaking is very hard and you have to constantly be learning. So this is a program where you come on and it's an opportunity for us to learn from each other. Uh, the second thing is, you know, some of us know specific, we all have different strengths. So it's an opportunity to teach others. So if you specialize in a particular area on public speaking, then this would be a good place to teach. You know, uh, even though I think I know quite a bit, but I'm always willing to learn from others. Uh, the third thing is, uh, you know, sometimes we make uh, videos, so we want to share it with others and get feedback. Uh, fourth, of course, is practice. Just talking on this show allows us to practice our public speaking skills. And this is a really good place to do it because if you do it here with others on this program, then you're more likely to do it well if you're in a high stakes situation. So at least you know uh, you can crystallize your thoughts and learn from it and then be better prepared if you have to do it uh, in a high stakes uh, setting somewhere. Uh, the other one is, uh, we it's a trusting environment you know we're all here to uh, support each other so we have that trust that if I say something or if I make a mistake I'm not going to be ridiculed there's no rejection here uh, you have to raise the so what I tell people is that if you come on this show it's up to you to raise the stakes take risks because here if you take risk and it doesn't work out you know nobody's going to get hurt so that's why you know what's working what's not working and this is all you know, we make it public so you can go back and uh, watch it to see how you come across. And you'd be surprised that after doing close to 29, there's always room to learn, but uh, you'd be surprised how well these shows actually turn out when I go and watch it. And you're amazed as you, if you're focused and prepared. Uh, there's a lot of useful stuff that's uh, that we get to discuss uh, on this show. And I, I'm amazed how much I learn from having discussion with other people who participate. Like I watch and sometimes I learn so much from Julie. Uh, I may have a thought and I may never have thought about something, but then when I hear Julie's feedback, I'm like, wow, why didn't I think of that? So it's also an opportunity to develop your thinking and turn that into a way to communicate to others to make them understand it. So I think this program's got a lot of good things uh, that, that helps uh, people develop their public speaking skills, leadership skills, listening skills. There are a lot of skills that are here that I could 
you know, spend a lot of time. So that's basically the uh, intro to today's show. What we're going to do is uh, once we have Julie and uh, uh, is, is it Bill? Is that is I'm sorry, Bill? Is it Bill? Right? I can't hear you. Uh, your audio is not coming through. You may. No, now you're muted. You, you're unmuted. Say something. You may have to join again because I, I'm, I'm not hearing. Julie, let me. Uh, can you unmute your line and say something? Yes, his name is Marius. Oh, is that his first name or last first, name? His first name is Marius. Oh, Marius. I thought it was last name. Okay, Marius. <laughs> Sorry, you're at the right. <laughs> you're on the right program. <laughs> Sorry. So I apologize. Uh, so Marius is joining for the first time. So we. Uh, he's been trying to join for some time. And today, obviously, we're glad that he could uh, make it. So once he gets his audio corrected, we'll get him to talk. So you'll have to work on that, Marius. We can't hear you. You may have to log off, or you can use the chat, the chat area, and let me know what kind of problem you're having. Okay, so he's off. So today's uh, a program, we're going to basically do a quick introduction, and then typically we have a three-minute segment there. Today we're going to use that as a way to discuss our goal, sort of like our resolution uh, for public speaking for this upcoming year. And then I have three segments. Today's segments are mostly discussion types, and I've t picked three topics uh, that I wanted to have a discussion with the, uh, the panel here. Uh, the one of them, the first one is uh, doing a review, and I think it's something we need to learn. What's the right way to do a review? So I've come up with my technique that I wanted to discuss and then learn to see what Julie and uh, Marius use, what they find effective, or what, if they have tried something that has worked for them that we can, uh, you know, that I would like to learn from them. Uh, the second segment is something that I'm working on, and I wanted to have a discussion on that. It's like a technique that I'm trying to see whether this can help somebody become a better speaker. This may be a little advanced technique, but it's worth discussing. And what I've done in this tech, what I'm trying to do in this technique is use the screenplays from movies and use that as a way to develop your speaking skills. So we can discuss that more. And the third one, I've spent quite a bit of time on this particular uh, topic, uh, the powers of speaking. And I wanted to have a discussion on that because I think it's important when you speak, you need to understand that you have a lot of power. And I wanted to have that discussion on what are the powers. Now, we're not going to be able to go into how do you develop that power. These are just to agree that there are different powers of speaking that you need to be aware of so that you can start using them and be effective in achieving your objective. So that's pretty much the show for today. And at this point, uh, I will let Julie do a quick intro and welcome everybody for the new year. And then we'll uh, have Marius do his introduction and then we'll move to our three minute segment. Thanks, Jay. Good morning, Marius. Nice to see you both. And thank you, Jay, for making this possible. As you know, I'm a pretty dedicated follower, and I learned a lot from this. So my name is Julie Wu Finkelstein. And I added the Wu because I'm Chinese, and most people see the name Finkelstein. They can't make that connection. My goal this year is to do. Uh, my goal this year is to professionalize the service I've been developing over the last two years. I have currently online three free workshops for anybody who's interested in joining. One is a Saturday morning reading uh, and discussion for success, and so it's for people who are either interested in uh, speaking in a meeting structure environment, and uh, you're welcome to uh, participants are welcome to moderate as well. And the second one is um, Wednesday evenings at Yusuf free conference number because I want to give other people a different access modality. And that one is more a discussion, a brief meditation, and commitments on success. And that one is at Wednesday evenings. Uh, again, you're welcome to join. And we have rotating facilitation, so everybody gets to practice leadership. Finally, I have a 10 stretches that is yin yoga structures. And they work, they're designed to work deeply inside the body-mind to uh, release energy. And finally, I'm writing a book called 10 Structures for Love and Life. 
and you're welcome to participate and contribute there all. Oh. And finally, I run a public speaking community on Google for support of this Coursera course. And if you're interested, email me at juliecrw999 at gmail.com. Thank you. OK, th thanks, Julie. Uh, Ma Marius, uh, yeah, you can do your quick introduction, and then we'll move to our uh, first segment, I mean, our three-minute segment, OK? Um, shall this uh, be a speech or just uh, a casual uh, introduction? This is just a, yeah, this one is just a casual, quick introduction, and then we'll move into our next segment, where it'll be more about discussing your goals for, uh, tw speaking goals for 2016. OK, it's not really that I shall hold a speech. This is uh, not not right now. Not right now. OK. OK, I'm Marius. Uh, I'm originally from Germany. And uh, I relocated uh, last year to Chicago. And uh, I'm a lawyer. And uh, since I'm in the US, uh, I figured out, OK, it's not working to uh, continue to work uh, as a lawyer. Um, I need a GD uh, degree here, and uh, it would take me two years and cost a lot of money. So I was reconsidering, OK, what else uh, could I do? And uh, I decided um, to become a business coach. And uh, I'm in the middle of, or I started the training last year in November. And um, my goal for this year is to start a coaching practice uh, in June. OK, great. I wish you all the best. <laughs> Maybe we can learn something about that from you. <laughs> coaching is, uh, yeah, coaching is uh, something that uh, I'd like to do at some point uh, regarding this you know, public speaking. So I need to get a little better first. <laughs> Actually, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, okay, so if you can mute your line, I'll just uh, introduce the, the first uh, the, the segment. The reason I'm asking you to mute your line is otherwise every time you talk, it'll, the, 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 thing will, the screen will keep switching back and forth. And when you watch it uh, later on, it gets distracting. So don't take that personally. It's just the technology we have to deal with here. And, uh, okay, so <clears throat> the first uh, segment uh, that we're going to do is really to kind of get this year started and talk about the speaking goals, right? And it's important to do it in the beginning so that at the end of the year you can assess, you know, how did you get better from where you are uh, right now? And then let's say at the end of the year when we do the show, you can assess whether you made the improvement, whether first of all you were able to do everything that you wanted to do. So even though I put out this is a three-minute segment, but I understand that it may take a little bit longer. So let me just tell you the things that I'm trying to do here with this. So I want it to be done publicly because then it's on the record. So then you can't just say, oh, my God, you know, uh, I don't have to f be accountable for it. If you put it here, if you say whatever you say, you're going to be held accountable for it. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> uh, at the same time, uh, come up with a plan of action. Like, so, okay, you want to become a better speaker. What does that mean? Uh, what are you going to do? What specific things are you planning to do to become a, a better speaker? And if you can be specific, that would be good. Uh, third is to find out like who's going to keep you accountable for your speaking goals. In my case, I'm going to entrust Julie. So if she helps, if she is okay with it, Julie will be my uh, somebody I'm recruiting to help me support it. At least find one person, so that way at least you can have somebody you can talk to. And it seems like Julie may be for more than one person. And then uh, the other thing is to set milestone. So I have certain milestones. In my case, I'm really planning for three months. I think one year is too long for me since I've already done quite a bit of stuff. And then ask you, answer this simple question. You know, first of all, what is the confidence level that you'll achieve your goal? And lastly, you know, how are you going to ensure that you're going to be better than you are today? So like, that's a question that we all need to, to answer because if you want to be uh, successful. So, so here are the things that, uh, that I'm planning to do. So I'll just give you quickly so it's on the, it's on the record. So a, a, as you know that we've been doing this show now for uh, like since last year. So I have developed quite a bit of experience uh, 
talking in front of the camera. So that's not going to be an issue there because I've already done that last year. So one of the things I'm working on, and Julie knows about this, is I'm currently writing a book, uh, and it's going to be my speaker's journey. The book is more about my journey starting from uh, you know, taking this Coursera course a couple of years ago to where I am right now. And the purpose of this book is to kind of help people to, I'm called, at this point I don't have a title for the book, but I'm, the title would be, the tentative title is like, How to Become a Good to Great Speaker. Now, that's a kind of a loaded term there, go to good to great. A lot of people can't, they, they're adequate. So first they're going to have to go from being adequate to good before they can go to great. Uh, so I show them the steps that I use and also some of the things that I've learned through my speaker's journey. And I also talk about some of the difficulties that I've had over the years, right from the start uh, when I started school till my last job and then how I got into this whole public speaking. So I talk about that and then I specifically show practically how one can go about going from adequate to good and good to great. So that's my book. So I'm hoping to get the first draft done uh, by the end of uh, this week, by Sunday, because I'm pretty close to finishing it. I need, I need to watch a few more videos of Dr. McGarity to finish it, just so that I'm making sure that I incorporate some of his ideas. The other thing I'm working on, and this is something that Julie and I are going to be collaborating, and we're still in a discussion stage, is to come up with a course, uh, uh, Fear of Speaking and come up with different tips and techniques on how somebody can overcome their fear of speaking. So this is an early discussion stage, but this is something that Julie and I have already started giving some thought and we've been brainstorming back and forth. So uh, one of the things that uh, is helping us here is that we've created a, a, a we pinned a post uh, on the discussion forum and we seem to be getting a lot of response uh, on that. So we know that there is a need out there. People, one of the number, that's the most popular post that we have on, on people having their fear of speaking. Uh, then the other one is, uh, yeah, so another thing we're going to do uh, that I'm planning to do is to try different things on this show. So last year we did a lot of things. We reviewed speeches, we uh, reviewed professional speeches, reviewed uh, individual speeches. We also shared a lot of speeches. So a lot of that is going to continue. Uh, the one thing that I'm going to add to something that I started last year, last year I created something because one of the things is that, just so you know, Marius, a lot of people who take this uh, Coursera course, Introduction to Public Speaking, do not finish it. But I'm assuming, I mean, that, that's a minimum. You've got to basically finish the course, but then the question is, what do you do after the course? So we came up with, we brainstormed, we I wanted to try something different, so we came up with something called the 330 challenge, which is to do a three-minute speech for 30 straight days, and that way you're developing a habit. So this year I'm taking that to the next level, and I'm calling it the 330 for a book that I'm reading. So I'm currently reading this book by Amy Cuddy, who gave that famous TED Talk about uh, presence, and she just came out with a book, I think at the end of last year called Presence, and I'm currently reading it. I'm learning a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that book and do a 3.30 just on that book. So I'm going to have 30 short videos taking ideas from that book and giving my perspective, my experience, and that becomes a part of a... So I'm doing two things. I'm reading a book and also turning that into shorter videos that I call it the 3.30 uh, challenge. So I'm applying the 3.30 for a book. So like a lot of people out there wondering, like, wait, I don't have new ideas to come up with. But what I'm, trying, what I'm saying now is that you don't need to. Just find a good book. If you like it, then come up with short uh, 30, 30 speeches from that. One book or maybe two books. Uh, then another thing that I'm working on is something that i just going to launch it today is uh, how do you take like screenplays and use that as a technique to become a better speaker? I haven't done this yet, so this is still a uh, work in progress, but I wanted to have that discussion, so I will... Uh, incorporated part of my practice to see if that works. So those are a few things and uh, the milestone, these are things that I definitely want to do in this quarter and beyond that I don't have it so at some point at the, at the end of the first quarter I'm going to have to review all these things 
and, and uh, listen to it and see how much of this I've actually done. And uh, then at the end of the first quarter, I, I may have to add some more or continue with it. So these are my you know, speaking goals. And Julie, uh, you're the person I'm assigning as somebody who's going to uh, keep me accountable and ask me, so Jay, you know, where are you? Where's your progress? <laughs> so you are, I'm giving you complete freedom <laughs> to, to beat me up if I'm not meeting my goals here. <laughs> All right, so any, any comments, uh, Julie, before you go to your uh, speaking goals? Uh? Uh, thanks, Jay. Yes, first of all, I will put it in my calendar, and I think I'll give you a monthly check-in on that. So maybe we can do a monthly progress report as part of the show. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, yeah. I, I think those are great goals, as you know, we... I, I work with you throughout the uh, speech talk live, and I really am happy to see that you are moving ahead and uh, furthering um, the level of challenge in your own speech career, as well as being a service to others uh, by writing a book that uh, will be inspiring and technique-driven as well. So I appreciate that, really, very much. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate your support. Oh, do you want me to go ahead now? Yeah, so are you ready for your goals or should we go to Marius? Uh, I, I can do my goals, but if Marius wants to go first, that's fine. Just go like this and I'll know. Do you want to uh, go first, Marius? Or if he needs more time. No, no. Okay, you okay. go. Okay, I go. More. He needs more time to jot down a few things. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks uh, Jay, for all your support throughout the year and Marius too. Um, just to make it public, Marius is my uh, my study buddy, and that's one of the tools I use, and I highly recommend our fellow students to use. So my goal this year on a speaking skill level, I hope to have fun, and I hope to have a more pow powerful presence and skills. In terms of practical project-related skills, I want to continue working the Wednesday evening and the Saturday morning class uh, to help people integrate speaking as well as success into our, because to me success is a universal theme as well as speaking, and so it's nice to have that double power, double intensity. I plan to make my commitment to participate in this Speech Talk Live as long as Jay will run it, at least for this year. Um, my commitment to Marius is that we'll work the four speeches together. Um, my personal commitments are I'll do the 3.30 theme on some videos by Professor McGarity. Every week I will do at least one. Um, I, I will post on the discussion boards as a mentor supporting fellow students. I'll run my Google community in service of the students. And I, I hope that we will add one, one more workshop and it could very well be um, the fear theme, I'm trying to figure out how to do it, whether it's a pop-up or a daisy chain or a schedule workshop, not sure yet, waiting for opportunities. In addition, I hope to investigate um, how to professionalize this as service. Since my uh, original goal of my practice is to individual uh, open source, open access, and then offering to organizations as a professional service, I need to investigate that. Um, perhaps join Toastmasters. Um, and then finally, I think Michael Port, which Jay introduced me to, is a brilliant uh, speaker, more from a performance perspective, acting perspective, than the rhetorical tra uh, tradition. So I hope to study some of his work as well. Thank you. And, oh, Marius, if you don't mind, I'll just ask you to be my uh, my conscience since we're doing this anyways. Yeah, so he's going to keep you accountable. Yes. Your accountable buddy, too. My accountable but buddy. Go. Oh, yeah, so one thing, <clears throat> that book, uh, Michael Port has come out with this book uh, called Steal the Show, and uh, he talks more about the performance aspect of... Uh, of public speaking in that book, because he he comes from the acting side, so 
Uh, which is well, also which is also a good thing to know because, but like I said, public speaking is not just one thing; it's a lot of things, right? Which we'll go into it later when we start talking about the powers of speaking. Uh, so it is important to understand the performance aspect of it uh, when you're when you're speaking. All right, Marius, you're next. And so, can you hear me? Okay. So my speaking goals for this year is um, I, I'm just started with Julie the uh, public speaking Coursera course again. So we did the first uh, introduction speech. So this is where we are. And my goal for the next six months is uh, to finish this course and to do all the speeches and to make them as good as possible so that we both feel really co uh, confident to go out there and do speeches. This is my goal. And um, I'm working on uh, to become a business coach. So for me, it's uh, a side goal of uh, public speaking, really to get good at, uh, to speak in front of people, present myself, and show them, OK, what can actually coaching do for them? So this is um, actually a really good uh, or oh, this is main goal for me, and uh, Julie introduced me to Michael Porter as well. I've seen some of uh, his uh, videos, so I will continue to to watch him. And um, yeah, Julie is my study buddy, and uh, we working together, and we keep <laughs> each other accountable. So. That's uh, my goals a little bit less than both of your goals, but I, I have uh, really a lot to do to um, get my business started, and uh, so it's, uh, public speaking is for me a little bit more on the side, so my goals are a little bit less than uh, both of your goals. But I try to do as much as possible and to learn as much as possible in a short period of time. Yeah, no, no, there's nothing wrong with that. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm too optimistic about my goals. <laughs> I, I know I am. <laughs> I, the, what I put down is something like, you know, uh, I put down for three months, so that's another thing. I put down these are for three months. The reason I put these, uh, Marius, so just so you know, is that a lot of these things have already been started. So these are like kind of continuing, so it's not like I'm just starting these just from yeah. scratch. These have all been... <laughs> in progress, like the book has been going on for the last uh, uh, three, six, mo six months to like, almost a year because uh, there are a lot of things that I'm taking from things I had done earlier. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing, I'll, I'll make a comment on it, <clears throat> when, you, when you go through this course the first time, here's my suggestion just so that uh, because the course can get overwhelming pretty quickly, I would just go through all the videos to first pass, because I tell Julie that this course, because I'm currently also viewing the videos again, and this is my fifth or sixth pass, okay? okay. So on the first pass, the thing to do is just to watch the video and jot down as it, like I have a book uh, that uh, that I have, I all the notes, and I keep on adding more notes to it. So make have a have a like a clean notebook and make notes as you're learning, okay. and the first pass, just go through it. As far as the speeches are concerned, the first pass, don't make them too complicated. Just get them done. So that's what my suggestion is. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck and you're not going to finish the course. And that's what, ha what, that's what I see happening to a lot of people. So mm -hmm. my, my advice is that the first time, make sure you watch all the videos. And as far as the speeches are concerned, pick a very generic topic where you don't have to spend a lot of time doing research or anything. Don't make it professional. So. The first speeches in the, uh, the the first pass, the speeches should not be about what you're doing for business coaching. That you can do later on. So I've just well, actually, I have done, and I have to, done with Julie. We have worked on it, and so so I'm continue with this one. Uh, I have started with this, and I I think it's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. Because uh, the reason I'm saying this is because we we don't see too many people that many people finishing the course. So uh, I I'd like you to finish the course because there's a lot to learn from the course. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the other thing is, uh, are you also making videos for your business coaching, or is that something you want to do? This is uh, later on. First, I have to start <laughs> the, the business. So my goal is um, uh, in June that I start uh, the coaching business. I will finish then the training in July with a written and oral exam. 
So it will start from there, June, July, and then maybe in the end of the year, then uh, maybe if I am have some uh, more experience in, uh, in coaching, then maybe I will do some videos. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. All so right. The end goal then really to present my coaching business on video. Yeah, that's great. Some great, great. So this course will help you a lot. All right, that's great. So we're going to take a brief pause so I can introduce the next segment, okay? And if you can mute your line, and I'll introduce the, the next segment. Okay, welcome to Speech Talk Live, episode number 30. This is segment number one. My name is Jay Oza. And in this segment, I wanted to have a discussion on reviewing a speech. Like, what is the, the best way to review it? So before I go into this technique that I'm kind of proposing, it's nothing you know, revolutionary or anything like that, uh, what I used to do in the past was uh, I would just watch, like, let's say if Julie sent me her video and saying, Jay, can you do a review of my speech? I would just basically watch the the video multiple times and jot down things, etc. But then I read somewhere that, and I'm not sure if it was related to speech. It might have been from this book that I'm reading right now from Amy Cuddy Presence. And what I discovered is that the way I've been doing the review is fine, but I think it may not allow me to do a real good review because if somebody's asking me to review I want to basically help them in many ways because speech has got many different parts to it so I, I think that a good way for me to give a good review is to do it in three passes now you, you can interchange it the last pass is the one where you want to watch it as it's recorded the way the person has sent you but on the first pass, you want to just focus on some specific aspect of it without other distraction. So let's say I am watching Julie's speech, a persuasive speech. The first thing that I would do, and this is just, you can interchange this, is to mute the audio completely and just focus on her body language. And that means that I'm now going to be looking for whether she's comfortable giving the speech, what kind of gestures she's using, is, is the, are the gestures distracting, or is it something that's capturing me to pay more attention? So just focus on her body language and what is it trying to communicate. And by muting the audio, I am not now going to, the words are not going to dominate. So I'm just going to just look at her vi video, I mean her body language and her gestures, facial expressions, etc. What is that trying to communicate? Because that's very important, right, when you're giving a speech. So then after I do that, I'll make notes saying, okay, comfort level, excellent. Uh, was she having fun giving the speech? Does she want to, did it look like she wanted to give a speech? Because sometimes a lot of people create that body language where they don't want to be there. And I want to know whether she's really into the speech or not, okay? Because that can tell me a lot. Like, if she's not into it, then, you know, what, what, what is her objective? So I'm trying to extract as much as possible without listening to what she's talking about, if that is possible. And again, I'm not saying I'm good at this. I have to, that's what I'm going to start doing. Then once I do that, on the second pass, I'm now going to not watch her but just focus on the content of the speech. So I'm just going to focus, I'm not going to look at her speech, and I'm just going to flow it like uh, Dr. McGarrity shows in the course, uh, whether I, I can flow her speech, come up with the outline, and what is her main message. So I'm really focusing on the content and invention and arrangement and all those things, right? So that's what I'm really focusing on. Uh, after I've done that, then I will watch the speech as is, as is, you know, with audio and video, uh, with with the body language and all that, to see if it's in, if it's in, it's in harmony. Is her body language and her content are all working together? So, I feel that if I do that in three passes, I would be able to provide a very good feedback on how effective that speech is. Now, 
one thing I want to make it very clear. When people are watching your speech, they're only going to get one shot. So this feedback is really, it's, it's much more than you would ever get from a person because this is to kind of dissect your speech into its elements because at the end, the elements will create the, the overall experience on how other people are going to be perceiving your speech. So I wanted to kind of get your feedback on it, uh, get your uh, point on, on how what do you find effective when you're reviewing a speech and is this something do you think will help others if you have to follow it, doing it in multiple passes so that you're isolating each part and then putting it together when you watch it on the third time. So Julie, what, what, what is your take? How do you currently review speech and, and what do you think of this, uh, this technique? So Jay, yes, up to now I've been just watching the um, speeches multiple times, but generally because I'm a content-driven person, I tend to take notes, uh, flow the speech at the first one, at the first go. And so I tried it both ways on your speeches today. Uh, I found that it was very helpful. First of all, um, for me, since I'm naturally um, content-driven, I do do the flow of the speech on the first round. And then the second round, I turn off the, and I now what I do is when I listen, I turn, uh, I turn, you know, I turn off the video. I don't look at the, I actually take it out of my screen. Uh, and I found that very helpful to help me uh, draw, uh, look at the content. And then I look at again muted, uh, looking at the body language. And yes, I do see a lot more of degrees of comfort. Um, how how clear and punctuated the body language is, and uh, and then the third round I can put it all together. So it, it's very um, effective and efficient way to look at the speeches. So I'm going to adopt that technique. So you so you think three is sufficient, right? Like you don't need to because like sometimes I don't even know if people are doing it even like one because what happens with one is that one will dominate the other and then you are not going to be able to. So this is, so just so you know, this is primarily if you want to really help somebody out and give them a really good review of what they're doing. But the reality is that if when somebody is watching your speech once, they're not going to be as focused on each of those aspects that you're, you're that you and I are talking, that we're talking about uh, in, in reviewing, because they're just only going to see it once. I, I think part of that, uh, whether three is important, is sufficient or not, is driven by how long the speeches are. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when the your last speech was about eleven minutes, and I actually had to watch it another time. Mm -hmm. So I imagine if it was half an hour, I would probably have to watch it many more times than three. You know, right, but that, whole that, great idea. At that point, you better get paid. Yes. Okay, you'll pay me. You will yes, pay me. At that point, I'll send you. A, you have your PayPal account ready? I will. Uh, yeah, Marius, uh, what what do you think? Uh, have you done a lot of speech reviews, and uh, and what do you think of this uh, technique? Well, I have uh, worked with Julie when she was uh, holding her speeches, and um, I was flowing the speech. And uh, when I was flowing it, I was so concentrated on the content, so I couldn't el actually see uh, her and watch her body language and uh, all the other things here you were talking about. So I think it's a really good uh, technique here you suggested. I watched your videos uh, yesterday, and uh, it sounds really convincing. So I will adopt it and will will use it with Julie. So. Um, I think I can give you later on uh, when I have used it uh, better feedback if this is working for me. Um, so far, what I have done uh, with Julie is um, I watched her videos and uh, I was concentrating on all aspects on the content and on her body language. So this was just when I wa uh, was watching it one time, and I could. Uh, actually sense uh, a lot during this watching one time. So for me, I have to see if I if it's necessary. What you're talking about is really a really deep, uh, good review. I think uh, 
a kind of uh, normal feedback would be probably watching one time and try to gather all the information you get. Um, yeah, your technique uh, sounds really good, but it seems to be right, a lot of a lot of will take a lot of time, and uh, so I don't know <laughs> if uh, a lot of people will do this. Uh, I'm doubting a little bit that. It's it's more like okay you get paid for for, for it uh, to, to to do it. This is really like uh, professional. If you really want to give a professional feedback, then your technique I think it's excellent. Um, for the normal kind of daily <laughs> feedback, it's probably uh, most people will continue to do um, just giving watching and. Try to concentrate on the content and see the person how, what is uh, are the gestures, how they do, and then give feedback on the whole uh, on the en encompassing um, uh, impression. So that's um, yeah. So far, my <laughs> yeah. No, 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 you're you're right. I mean, uh, th this is uh, primarily like you know your uh, Julie's study buddy, right? So obviously you're working to help her improve. Yes. But you're right. This is something that most people are, are not going to do. They're just going to – because when, when this is for somebody who really wants to help somebody get better, right? Yeah. But yes. when you're giving it in front of an audience, they're only going to judge you on whether they like the speech or they don't like it. That's basically it, right? Yeah. There's no – like, well, let me tell you why I didn't like that speech. They're never going to do that. They're going to say, yeah, it was a great speech, or they could be lying to you and saying, oh, I liked it, I liked it, and they didn't understand a single thing you said. So, uh, But this is primarily, like you said, because on this show, we we are all basically our student, right, and teachers and coaches. So if somebody, like what as I was kidding to Julie, that this is something that I would do unless that you know, you're part of this uh, community and saying, Jay, can you help me up? I have a speech to give, and it's a, a speech that I'm giving for some particular occasion. Uh, mm. Unless it's a shorter speech. Like for three minutes, yeah, you can do that, right? But if mm. it's like what you said, if it's a half-hour speech that you have to give, let's say you were giving a, a speech on business coaching or something, it's a half-hour, then I wouldn't do it like what you just said. You're absolutely right. Then I better get paid if I'm going to go through three passes the way I just showed. This is just a, a technique that I just wanted to kind of have a discussion. So I agree with you. It's a good technique, but it is mm -hmm. time consuming. Is that the main takeaway there? Yes. Yes. Right. Uh, Julie, any, any closing thoughts? Uh, do you think like if somebody uh, watches the speech as it is the first time, do you think that could uh, potentially bias them if they then went back and started doing uh, by uh, by flowing it by looking at just at the content and also looking at the body language because that the, the sequence of steps are very important here right because if I listen to your speech and then saying okay now let me go back and look at her body language then already I've seen you give the speech as you have recorded it, it will that help me understand your body language better or it just it just depends on on, on each person on how they want to uh, the technique that they're comfortable with um, your question is, uh, is, does the sequence matter? Is it, if you watch, if you do the content first, does, does that affect your, uh, your con how you evaluate the body language? My, my, own, my own feeling is that 80% of, of, at least 70% of my perception is driven by content because I come through a, a you know, more uh, content-driven uh, pro profession, right? IT, information systems design. So for me, the content, I'm, I'm naturally going to gravitate toward the content. So for me to do something else is not in alignment with my process. And then I think uh, implicitly you want the body language to align with the content anyways. So to me, it actually supports the underlying process. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Uh, uh, Marius, any closing thoughts before we close this segment out? No, I uh, agree. What you both said, it's uh, um, oh maybe um, 
I, I agree with you that uh, it makes sense to just uh, watch the body language of the person first because you can sense so, so much. Uh, you're not distracted, okay, what uh, did the person say uh, in, uh, in this segment. You just can really concentrate and focus on the body language. So uh, I think it makes sense just to, uh, the first time when you watch it mood uh, all the uh, yeah mood mood's mooded and uh, yeah just watch this how it is and then uh, later on uh, concentrate on uh, the content. Right. <clears throat> yeah. The, the, before I close it out, there's one uh, research that was done uh, that you may know about uh, where. I don't know if it was done at MIT. I think it might have been done at MIT. And what they did was, uh, you know how uh, students do a survey of their teacher at the end of the year? So they had uh, the students uh, do the survey. And then they had uh, other students who didn't take the class, but they just made them see just the first few seconds or something. I don't even remember. And they found that the people who watched the first, it, it, the, the, the outcome was very similar, that the people who watched the few seconds said, like, I like the teacher, and the ones who took the course at the end of the year said that, yes, we like the teacher. It was very consistent. And what the survey, uh, the research showed is that, that people pick up, people were able to determine who's a good teacher and who's not just by watching the teacher for the first few 10 seconds or what than those even who took the entire course for the whole semester. So it's kind of interesting how much information people, it's subconsciously we're getting that information. That's why that body language is very important. All right, great. Uh, if you can mute your line, I'm going to introduce the next segment. <clears throat> okay, welcome to Speech Talk Live episode 30. My name is Jay Yosa, and in the second segment uh, we want to have a discussion around a technique that I've just started using, so I just wanted to find out what uh, Julian Marius think about this technique. Now this may be a little advanced technique. Now some people who are taking the Coursera course or learning public speaking, I don't recommend you go and try this technique because this is a uh, probably I would consider an advanced technique but it's something to you know give it a shot it's something to start getting used to and the technique is not that difficult uh, so I actually stumbled onto this so I started uh, I, I tend to watch a lot of uh, videos on YouTube of different movies like Godfather uh, you name it uh, Schindler's List uh, uh, and in fact, we uh, even review some of those scenes as a way to become a better speaker. And Julie can attest to that. We have used the scene from Godfather, the famous scene with uh, Hyman Roth and uh, Michael Corleone. Uh, then we used some scenes from the movie Schindler's List. And uh, we thought that these are good ways to learn how to become a, a better speaker because these are done by professionals, right? And they are only going to be included if they're perfect. So I said, why not go through and look at a screenplay and pick certain dialogue and, uh, and, and, and you know, mimic it, and then watch the screenplay and see how the professionals do it. And by doing this over and over again, you have now something to compare against and saying, okay, wow, this is how I would do it. Now, it's not going to be always going to be as good as the people that are doing it who are pros, right? But at least you will understand how they're doing it is, is, or is there anything you can pick up from the way they do it. So the, the technique is basically you find a screenplay. And the one that I'm currently looking at, and this is basically a good one to look at because it has a lot to do with public speaking and the fear of speaking is that movie that won the Academy Award, uh, The King's Speech, where uh, King uh, George or I'm not sure King Edward, I don't remember his king, what, what king we're talking about here. He had to give a speech uh, when Germany attacked uh, uh, England and they were declaring war and he had to give this speech. But he has a lot of fear of speaking and then they had this coach he had to teach him on how to overcome that fear. Uh, 
So it was a, it's a very good movie, especially about how to overcome your fear of speaking. So that's the movie that I'm using right now. That's a screenplay. And there was this one particular scene at the end where he has to go in front on the, on the radio to give the speech. Uh, and then I, I just watched it, and I included all the links uh, that you can watch to get an idea. And, but, but this one is not really a good example because in this particular case, the king has a speech impediment. I think he has a, a stuttering problem. So this may be that your speech here, when you do it, is going to be much better than the king because the king has some speech issues, speech impediment. But this is just so you get an idea that you can start looking at screenplays and use it as a way to practice your speaking and then watch it and then see how close you came. So it's a technique that I just wanted to discuss to see if uh, you think this can help people. And like I said, this is not this is time consuming again, but this is just another technique that you can use to become a better speaker. And again, this brings into something that Julie had said that it adds the performance aspect of speaking also into your, your public speaking. So if your speech has an, you're great with the content, but somehow your, your performance level isn't that up to par, this is another a, a, a technique that can help you in, uh, improve your performance skills when you're giving a speech. So I'd like Julie uh, to give with me, uh, Julie, what do, you, what do you think of this technique? Do you think this could be helpful to you? And is this something you would want to give it a try? Uh, thanks, Jay. I watched it, and um, I think I like what you said. Uh, you gave a very step-by-step -step process, which is one, read it, two, record it, three, watch it. So read the script, record your own, and then watch the professional do it. And then re-record your own. I think that's a very, practice is a, is a great thing. Uh, however, acting sounds too challenging for me. But I did come up with two parallels. One is um, I added to a comment on your site. I could watch the elevator speeches and then just mimic that because that's really what I want. Um, and then one of the things that perhaps you might like to talk about in some future session is how to pivot from the elevator speech, which is like one, uh, 30 seconds, into a three-minute intro. Because I think that's a very powerful tool for anybody who wants to present themselves in any context. Uh, so I'm going to, if I have time, I'm going to look into that, uh, just modeling the elevator speeches. The other area that might be fun for me to try, and again, adopting your idea, is I have a, a poetry reading buddy on one evenings of the week for about 20 minutes to half an hour. So I could pick poetry with their professional readers and just um, mimic that because that's only like you know one minute. So it'll be a quick and easy way to developing some skills. So that's my opinion. I like the idea. I think I'll apply it in a little different context. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I like your idea about poetry reading, maybe you can take that as a segment. Remember uh, one of the segments that you may want to facilitate and you can send us a, a particular poem and maybe you know show us if it's, it, it would be good if it's a poem that's been recorded by somebody who are, who are professional actors. So it's similar to the screenplay, same thing, right? Uh, but I think somebody did recommend one time, I don't know who it was, that poetry reading is a good way to improve your public speaking skills. I'm not sure who that was, but I read that somewhere. So Julie, I think that is something, remember one of the things we were talking about uh, before we started is that we got to start something so that we can finish it. So I think those are two things that you're giving me that I have to think about. One is to come up with a segment on how to take a, a, an elevator speech to an introduction speech. What is the what is the handshaking and the protocol that would be involved? So I have to think about that. And the one thing I want you to think about is if you can come up with some good examples of poetry reading as a way to become a better speaker. So I'm giving you some work back too. Uh, Marius, what, what do you think of this uh, reading uh, screenplay and even what Julie just added, uh, reading poetry? Poems. I think it's a good idea, and um, 
what I uh, read several times and heard well, humans learn through mimicking to really look, okay, this is a good example. If I do the same thing, uh, then I can be like him. So look uh, how babies learn. Babies learn the language uh, mimicking uh, the, the parents and uh, it goes on. And uh, in school we may be making mimicking uh, our peers, our teachers, so I think it's a good technique, yes? All right, so th thanks a lot, that's a good feedback. Now again, uh, I, I consider this an advanced technique because these are people who have gotten past going from being adequate to good and now they want to take it to the next level. Uh, because I think we do a lot of this when we are young in school because I had to read a lot of poetry loud but then when we get older we don't do it. That's why I didn't include poetry. I said screenplays would be better because there are a lot of videos of screenplays available uh, on YouTube. With poems I, had, I didn't do any kind of search to see what kind of poems are. I'm sure the famous poems by Edgar Allan Poe and all those are probably available that you can find. So yeah, so and any, any closing thoughts Julie on uh, because these are just another, like, I'm, I'm trying to come up with different techniques because after a while, like what uh, Marius said, you need to see what are some good examples out there so that when you're speaking, if you can read poems well, then you can incorporate that style into your public speaking when you're in front of people. It will make you a much more effective, uh, you, you know, speaker. Um. Thanks, Jay. So first of all, it was Professor Mary, uh, <laughs> Professor um, McGarity, who said read poetry out loud. In oh, okay. Okay, so it was him. Okay. Yeah. So secondly, I will take your challenge. I will look, look that up. And thirdly, I want to say that uh, Mary is absolutely right. That people not only do people learn through mimicking, people actually empathize through watching other people. So there's a, a brain cell, and, and in, in recent neuroscience, it's called a mirror cell, M-I-R-R-O-R. -R -R. And we can actually not only mirror each other in behavior, but also in emotions. So I just want to underscore that. Thank you. Yeah, so one of the person that I've been uh, mimicking, just so you know, and I think I included it in my book, uh, when it came to informative speech because uh, it, it came after I watched that uh, particular video lecture that Dr. McGarity does uh, where he, uh, 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 cl clarity through elaboration, I don't know if you remember going, if, you've, if you remember seeing that particular uh, section, where he uses the example of uh, Elizabeth Warren where she makes a point and then she elaborates. Uh, if watch that. That's I think is one of the be best example technique on how to give an informative speech. The clarity through elaboration. So the person that I was watching uh, actually was last night I believe was Steve Jobs, and I was watching when he first launched his iPhone uh, when he did his iPhone launch uh, presentation, the 2007, and I noticed something that he does. I said, you know, what makes Steve Jobs so good? And then it occurred to me, it's very similar to what Dr. McGarity said, that when he's talking, even though it's a large audience, right, but the way he's talking is almost like he's talking to you at a booth at a convention floor. That's how his speech sounds like. Even though he's talking to a large audience and he's far away from them, but the way he's talking, he's almost talking to you right like he's next to you. And the way he does it is like something that I've always uh, recommended, uh, Julie, if you remember, that keep asking questions. Like, you know, so what do you think of this? How do you think this? I, like he keeps asking questions and then he uses these real zippy words like, isn't this amazing? Isn't this wonderful? You know, and, and these words are like, I don't know if they're well chosen or not, but these are the kind of words that even after he's done, you will remember those words because the words are that powerful. The words that, and these are simple words. It's something like, and I don't want to bring this guy up because I know how Julie feels about him. It's kind of what Donald Trump does a lot. He tends to use these zippy words that after a while you're like, well, nobody talks like that except him, 
but then you tend to remember those words. And Steve Jobs kind of uses the same technique if you watch that uh, iPhone launch. So that's the person that I've been mimicking because he's considered as sort of the gold standard when it comes to giving presentation. So I just wanted to throw that out, that uh, Marius, that you're absolutely correct. And I just wanted to say that, that I do mimic people that I watch. The other person I also mimic is Bill Clinton. So there you go. These are the two that I've been doing some mimicking. So any closing thoughts, Marius? Who are you mimicking? I'm uh, actually mimicking um, John Asaraf and uh, uh, yeah, Abram P Pagan. So this is my both uh, guys uh, I like and the style, how they talk and how they present themselves. So I think they are quite good. So <laughs> I don't know if you know them. The, the one is a famous uh, guy from Secret and the other one is uh, he has a lot of uh, online business. Uh, Can you put those names in the chat session, and I will take a look at them. And Julie, who are you mimicking? I, I, I'm going to have to pick somebody. I, it never occurred to me to mimic somebody. OK, OK. So I'm mimicking you. I'm using more Oh, no. <laughs> you put too much pressure on me now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You're not mimicking. That's not the kind of mimicking you've got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna look like a wild and crazy woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, okay. So you got the names John Asaraf and Aben Pagan. Okay, I'll take a look at them. All right. So we'll close this session out and uh, move to our last segment. Okay. Okay. And just mute your line so I can introduce the next segment. Okay, just give me a second. Okay. Okay, welcome to Speech Talk Live, episode 30, segment number three. My name is Jay Oza. And in this segment, we're going to talk about power of speaking. Now, you know, you always hear that speaking is power, right? But you never really get people to explain what, what are the powers, like how do you get power, right? Well, we're not going to focus on the how, but what are they first? So this one, this uh, segment, we're going to focus on making sure we understand, you know, what are the powers of speaking uh, when you hear somebody speaking. And I've come up with five, but before I go into each five, I want to kind of tell a little story to kind of illustrate uh, the, the power of speaking and power itself, because human beings... Uh, whenever you're speaking, there's a power. Like I'm speaking right now, in some sense I have a power because you guys are listening. So there's a power of speaking right there. The the story I want to tell comes from uh, uh, 1960 when John F. Kennedy was running for president. And uh, after it looked like he was going to win, he needed to select a vice president. So he sent a like a courtesy offer to, to Lyndon Johnson, thinking that, you know, Lyndon Johnson at that time was the Senate Majority Leader, which was a very powerful position, uh, being a Senate Majority. And the Vice President wasn't really that powerful at all. In fact, uh, there's a famous quote that somebody <clears throat> uttered, I think it might have been uh, uh, FDR's Vice President, that being a Vice President isn't worth uh, a bucket of spit. That spit can be changed to other things, but that's what it is. That That's what that position is worth. It, is a, it was just a position you didn't do anything. So when John F. Kennedy s sent that offer to Lyndon Johnson, it's sort of, sort of like as a courtesy. The, perp the intent think thinking was that he was going to refuse it. But Lyndon Johnson didn't refuse it. He accepted it. So it caught the Kennedy staff completely by surprise, like, what happened here? We thought this, the way this thing worked is that you offer to somebody who's powerful and then they would refuse it, so at least they would feel good about it. And people who were close to Lyndon Johnson were also shocked that he accepted that. They were like, they just thought that, hey, that's a nice gesture, but he was never going to accept it. So one of, one of his close advisors came to Lyndon Johnson and said, uh, uh, Lyndon, you know, don't you know you have more power being a Senate Majority Leader? 
why would you want to become a vice president where you're going to have very little power? And he said this famous quote that I always like to use. And he said this quote, power is where power goes. And that is so correct <laughs> that if you if power is up to you, you determine whether you have power or not, not by the position. And he was so right that that quote I always use that you know power is where power goes. If you do a search under Lyndon Johnson, you'll you'll find that. And it's a very appropriate quote for this uh, particular uh, topic that we're discussing. So in, in my speech that I'm not going to go into, that's why I recorded it, because otherwise we can end up spending their books and books written on it. So there are five powers that I've identified, right? You know, the first power is the power of presence. And sometimes presence may mean that you may not have to say much because of the presence. Uh, you have that stature. Uh, the second one is the power of your voice, you know, how you use your tool. Your voice is your tool, your weapon. And if you use it right, the way you, you know, uh, high, low, anger, you can show, you can communicate a lot with your voice. That gives you power, and you really need to know how to use that power. Uh, the third one, of course, is the message. Your message has to be very powerful, and that's another thing that gives you power when you're speaking. You know, sometimes a speaker may not be good, but the message sometimes can be very dominating. And the one famous example, I've given you examples in there, the one famous example that nobody ever thinks about uh, that comes, I think it was in the 1980s, if you, uh, maybe, yeah, it was 1980s. Uh, if you remember, there was that riot that took place when Rodney King was beaten up by the policeman and there was a trial and the policemen were found not guilty. And then there were riots that took place in Los Angeles. And they brought Rodney King and he was like really nervous and he said, something to kind of calm the situation down and he said you know can we all get along he was like really nervous and a lot of people thought that that alone helped uh, uh, stop the riots so that was the message the message he was not a great speaker or anything but his message was very compelling like hey you know enough of this let's get along are you you, you know I'm the one who's been hurt why are you guys rioting and I think that had an effect uh, the, the fourth power is the power of experience and to create that experience it requires doing a lot of things well and if you like I was in my video I say I haven't been to a speech where I can say that I have been to that many speech where I could say wow the, the experience was just amazing and uh, you may have you may have gone to some speeches and I'm not talking about watching it on video I'm being being live at the event and and the fifth one is the power of change uh, is the speech so powerful enough that the person will enable you to make some kind of a change? So those are the five powers that I've come up with. Then let me know what you think, and if you think that there's anyone that I'm missing in there, because I'd like to like to find out from you guys uh, what what do you think about this idea of uh, when you're speaking, you have power, and how do you use it, and what are some of the things that you need to learn so that you exert that that power whenever you're in a situation and speaking to people. Uh, Julie? Thanks, Jay. Using my hand signals. <laughs> so, um, very interesting topic. Uh, I think you did a great job um, developing the five powers, and I think uh, this is definitely um, a proactive way of looking at speech. So instead of looking at speech and say overcoming fear of speaking, which is something we have to look at, is look at the positive attributes. So it's always nice when you're doing tra you're talking about change and transformation is to look at the the bottom line and the upper line because that gives a path. You know, in uh, professional consulting is called gap analysis, right? So um, Today I'm going to speak to the power of presence, and and because the power of presence, you know, you had mentioned in the earlier segment that the minute, you know, two or three seconds, you, the the audience have already made up their mind on what they think of you, and that is pre-verbal, and that's embedded in the power of presence. So I see there's six elements 
in the element of that constitutes presence. And it shows up not just in speech, but everywhere you go. So the first one is just showing up, like you said, being physically present. The second one is attention, how awake and aware you are of the environment. So one of the things that we talked about meditation is meditation refines and solidifies and increases the power of attention. Okay. The third one is uh, showing up or enthusiasm. When you have attention and enthusiasm, what you get is energy. So that's the third component. Energy offers a kind of clarity and intensity. Um, the fifth one is intention. If you have a clear intention, you're here to provide the service, your audience will pick that up, the clarity of intention. And six is uh, empathy or caring or connecting to the audience. So when you talk about Steve Jobs talking to a massive audience of thousands of people, but he can act as if though the audience could feel like as if though he's sitting right next to him, talking to him. To me, that's connectivity reaching the stage of caring and empathy. And all this together, all these five elements adds up to charisma. And charisma is a presence that, that is very useful in public speaking, but it's very useful every time you show up as a human being. So I think that what you're saying is great, and I think each of them merit that level of uh, investigation. So that's why I want to share. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's good that you focused on one. So yeah, so <clears throat> sometimes you don't need all of them. You just need one of them. And uh, even if you take one of them, that's pretty powerful. But sometimes you can combine, you know, multiple of these, uh, uh, like change and message could go together. So so it's a good, good, Julie. I like the way you developed that uh, thing about presence. And one day you can take that and show how somebody can do that. So that that's another another little homework for you. Now that you've given us showing up, attention, enthusiasm, intention, empathy, and I'm pretty sure each one of those could itself be a, uh, a book or a topic in itself. So that was very good. I like the way you did that. Uh, Marius, what do you, what do you think? Uh, what are your views on, on power of speaking and some of the five powers that I talked about, or, or which one do you want to focus on? Well, I think uh, power um, is uh, really important how you, like uh, Jolie said, how you show up. This is, uh, gives the uh, audience an impression of you. And uh, I heard uh, or read uh, a few years ago, people, what is uh, your message and uh, your words, what you're saying, this is only 20 or 30 percent of actually what people perceive. So what Julie was focusing on, on the present, I think it's really important to how you show up, how you present yourself, what kind of charisma you have. So, and if you are then on top, you have then a good message, you're perfect. You're really perfect. So I totally agree with uh, Julie to concentrate on uh, your body language, on how your words sound, how your voice is, uh, the modulation of your voice. So that's all important. And of course, on top, if you have a good message, <laughs> that's uh, all together, that makes them a good speech. So I think uh, this all together, that makes it powerful. If you leave out some of the things, then uh, it's not so powerful. I think a powerful speech uh, comes to, uh, when it comes all together, then it's a powerful speech. So I think, but the, the focus uh, Julie has on um, uh, presence, I think it's, uh, it's uh, right to focus on this and then on the message. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think there's one thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, it, uh, I, I will start. Thank you. <laughs> right, right. I, I think there's one thing I was just not thinking about what you just said, Marius, that I might be missing here. And because, see, you can have a lot of 
power, but the question is, and I'm not sure if this is a power or this is just, it is the way it is, is how you use that power. Of course. Because there have been a lot of people who have been known for being very powerful speakers, but they weren't, they were, did not use it for good. They used it for a lot of bad things, right? So is that just, I guess that's not a power. That's what you do with the power that you have, right? So uh, it's it's also one of the things that, that a lot of people develop, uh, that they develop early on that I have a lot of power from, 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 from speaking, but then they take it in a different way and they become, you know, they use it for, for, for evil purposes. So it, it is, that's why what I wanted to get across is that when you're speaking, uh, there are two things to remember. There's power in speaking and then there's also power in listening, right? And there was a, a psychologist, I think his name is uh, Wyke, and he said something that I always like to, always, it's one of my favorite quotes besides the Lyndon Johnson quote. And he said that when you are speaking, you've got to speak as if you're right. But when you're listening, you have to listen that you could be wrong. And mm -hmm. I think that is so, so true that a lot of people always want to show power when they're only like like I'm talking right now so you guys are listening but at the same time one of the things that allows me to do here with this Google Hangout is that when you're speaking I immediately mute my line because I don't want to interrupt you because I have a habit of interrupting people but in this thing I just I'm constantly it's becoming a habit that when when I'm listening to you I will let you finish because I want to know what you what you what you're saying and there's a power in that too, the power in listening. Now, when you're, uh, so the question you may ask is like, well, wait a second, Jake, if I'm speaking, how can I do both? And the way you do it is, again, go, I go back to Steve Jobs' example, and I think Bill Clinton does this really well. They draw the people in by asking the question that you are already thinking of but not able to ask. So I'm making you involved in my speaking. So instead of me talking down to you, I'm talking with you as an equal. And that's a very difficult technique that I don't see a lot of people out there are able to. So again, it goes back, to, this is all trying into some of the earlier things we talk about, that mimicking part is very important. If there are exemplars out there of people who do something well, then it is important for us to watch it again and again and again. And I keep watching some of these speeches again and again and again and try to look for what are the subtle things because they're doing it instinctively but for us as we are learning we have to learn those things so that it becomes a part of something that is automatic we don't have to think about it right because that's what makes you go from being a good speaker to a great speaker yeah. so anyway that's uh, uh, Julie any, any 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 closing thoughts uh, because again power is a pretty tricky thing it could be used for good and bad but yeah. it, it, it is something that you do get and you have to think about it when you are speaking because if you're speaking and you're not thinking in terms of power then my question is why are you speaking uh, and any thoughts on that Judy before we close this out yeah absolutely I think um, you tap onto a very fundamental reasons why people are afraid of speaking is first of all this, um, this power I think people implicitly know they have this power and uh, they, they don't know how to leverage it. And any kind of skill or tools is a technology. It doesn't have a value, a moral value. So as human beings, we want to be clear about our own, our own moral values and then use the tools to, be, to help us become more effective. So I agree with everything you guys, both of you are saying. Thank mm -hmm. you. Great. Uh, and any closing thoughts, Marius? No, I have nothing to, to add to what I said. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to take a brief break and I'm going to get back to something else. Okay, I need the break so I can edit that out. Yeah, so so Marius, this was your first time, so what, what was your experience? Is this, uh, was this uh, good, bad, ugly, or what? <laughs> Very ugly. <laughs> Very ugly. That's what I thought. 
No, actually, I really enjoyed it and it uh, was uh, quite uh, informative. And um, so I'm looking forward and uh, next time uh, when I can present my speech and uh, get some uh, your feedback. So I think it's um, it's a really good uh, way to communicate and to learn with each other. Is there any topics or something you want us to bring up or any speakers you want to work for the show? would be a good one to review because you mentioned two names there John Asraf and yeah. even Pagan if there are there any any of their speeches that are like let's say between less than 20 minutes or 15 minutes that are good to review um, Evan Pagan is all about business I probably not so much John Asraf he has a lot of speeches um, it's all about selling. <laughs> okay, I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it because sometimes we do a theme show. So if there's a show on a particular theme like sales, then because yeah. one of the things I'm working on is developing a sales theme, and one of the person that I'm looking into is Anthony Robbins because he's well known. Yeah. So so he's, Anthony Robbins really is one of those yeah. guys. So we can combine like three speakers and saying that these are the three examples of good s people who can sell when they're yeah. giving a speech. So those are that's a good. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, Julie, I got. Three things that you had mentioned about pivoting from elevator to intro speech is something I'm going to look into. And you're looking into how to use poetry or poems, reading poems, as a way to become an effective speaker or develop a, a technique, a, a, another technique of becoming a, a, a good speaker. Anything else that you wanted to? Any speakers or anything that we think uh, we should uh, review on this program or any topics? You're muted. I am. <laughs> so I thought, you know, given that you've done the goals for the year, I thought it would be nice to have a, like a quarterly progress meeting. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, update. You have something uh, that you can really measure your success uh, or where you are and uh, what you have to do to really come to your goal. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I agree. Quarterly progress is something. That's why mine are mostly quarterly. Yearly is too far away. So I, I want this to be on a quarterly basis, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, anything else? Or we can close out the show. That's it. Thank you. That's All right, it. well, let me thank uh, Julie and Marius. Marius, thank you for joining us for the first time. I hope you we see you uh, more often. And yes. if any time you have anything that you think would be good to include in the show, just let us know, okay? Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, enjoy thank your weekend, you. and again, thank you very much. And that's the wrap. Okay, thanks, everybody. Okay, thanks, bye. everybody. Bye.